bugs yesterday, didn't I? Oh boy. Wheels are still looking nice though. Lots of oil still. So this is our load today. Pretty small actually. But it's in a rush. I need to get this to Geraldton, Ontario today, as soon as possible. So I'm just doing my pre-trip, waiting for my e-log to say, hey, you can get back on the road. We'll be back at it. Let's get going. I just called the receiver. He is waiting for me. He's excited to get his product. I'm excited to deliver it. It's gonna be a good day. to kick up too much dust here. I just wiped off all the chrome on my truck that was just polished. I want to try to keep them shining longer this year, but it is a lot of maintenance. Like you get it polished and that's not the end of it. You got to keep that that chrome and that aluminum shining. A lot of bull snot products. We're going to go straight across here. Right across, as soon as this pickup comes from our left. I don't want to cut them off. I'm not feeling like that today. You're driving a Chevy. Good choice. Here we go. My engine fan is not helping with the dust situation. Ouch! Even trucker Josh misses the gear every now and then. Don't judge me. Don't look at me like it never happens to you. And if you're driving an automatic, you can just sit that conversation out. <laughs> Let's go. What a way to start the day. Man. Can't find them, grind them. I'm not afraid to admit I'm not perfect. Look at how green everything is. I talk about this almost every day, don't I? Still, after all winter in Canada, when summer comes, every, I'm, just, I'm just like in awe. Wow. Beautiful. Wash that window a bit. I'm stopping at the Flying J on the other side of Thunder Bay. I can wipe my windows down better there. Gotta grab a coffee and some juice. Oh, excuse me. I want to ask you a question. What is 24 Celsius in Fahrenheit? 24 degrees Celsius is 75.2 degrees Fahrenheit. Woo! It's the perfect day. The perfect temperature. What a day to be trucking. What a day to be alive. Look at this.
this truck. That is awesome. I've seen this guy all around the prairies. Finally get to park beside him. That is awesome. day too. What a great guy. He's hilarious. Joking around the whole time. French Canadian, but he spoke English too. But man, funny guy. He used to be in the military when he was younger. And man, did he have stories to tell. Thanks. He was stationed in Germany for a while. Oh, and he was telling me about the shenanigans they got into, you know, on their days off and on the weekends and how much fun they had out there. It sounded like a blast. What's interesting is he says that he's a French Canadian. Until he joined the military, or when he joined the military, all he spoke was French. He learned English in Germany. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> okay, I think we got everything, we got everything. I think I'm ready to roll. Ready to hit the road, Jack. I might come back once more again there now. I'll stop. I think this is a gold mine. I think they're mining gold. That's what Google says anyways. I had to have a special escort to get into where I delivered. And a special escort out again. And I had to go through security and stuff, so. Pretty fancy. Fancy, fancy business. Yes, okay. How's it got here? They're gonna get suspicious if I keep sitting outside their gate. I gotta go. I'm gonna go to Dryden tonight. That's the plan. That's the best parking situation I can think of. Not too much parking between Dryden and Kenora. And I don't really wanna drive late into the night. Last night, there was a huge moose on the highway. A uh, camera wouldn't have been able to pick it up. It was so dark, it happened so fast. It was in the uh, opposite lane of me. So it was actually in this lane. Right around here somewhere. And I was going the other direction, so I, I missed it. And I tried to warn the drivers coming towards me, but no one up here has their CB radios on, so I was trying to warn them, there's a moose in your lane, there's a moose in your lane. Flash my lights at them, they flashed me back. I probably thought that I was like, I flashed them off and on, like I never flash high beams at people, but I was, I was my off and on, off and on, off and on, trying to warn them. And they figured out pretty quickly what I was trying to warn them about. I saw their brake lights come on and I saw them swerve around the moose in my mirror. I don't think they hit him. 
I slowed down just to make sure they were okay and they kept going. So I think they managed to avoid the moose, but yeah, I don't like driving through here at night if I don't have to. Though it is nice and peaceful. I do like night driving for that. There's less traffic and it's just you on the road, but that's the problem. It's just you on the road and the moose. You hit the moose, it's just you and the moose and the moose always wins. Now I'm wondering what's going on up here because a car just passed me the, going the other direction flashing his high beams at me trying to warn me of something. Sometimes when cars do that that means there's like a radar trap around the corner there's police around the corner. You know I never do that and I'll explain why. I never warn people of police presence. Never. You never know who is in that vehicle that you're warning to slow down. They could be kidnappers. They could have a kidnapped victim in their trunk or the back of their car or human traffickers trafficking young girls. And the only chance that those young kids have of being saved is being pulled over because their kidnapper is speeding. So you could be warning a, a kidnapper to slow down that there's police presence coming. So he slows down, goes past the radar trap. Those kids never get saved, never get seen again. It could be a murderer fleeing a murder scene and the police are on the lookout and he's obviously, or she, is in a hurry to get away from the crime they just committed. And the only reason they are not caught and brought to justice is because somebody traveling in the other direction thought it was a good idea to warn them that hey there's cops around the corner watch out now the murderer never gets caught you never know who's in those vehicles coming towards you i never never warn people of police presence if they get pulled over let them get pulled over if they were breaking the law that's on them that could be the only chance a young child has of being saved or a kidnapped victim or someone being trafficked for the sex trade. Human smugglers, drug dealers, criminals of all sorts. They could be speeding because they're, they're anxious. They know that they just committed a crime. They're not paying attention to their speed. And they get pulled over and you save a life or you catch a bad guy. I never, never warn people of police presence. That is not something I ever do. All I, can, all I can think of is what if it was my kid? What if it was my sibling? What if it was someone I love who just got kidnapped and their kidnapper is just a little bit, you know, on edge because of what they've just done and they're just speeding a little bit my loved one could have been saved had they just been pulled over for speeding. But no, somebody went and warned them that the cops are there, so I never see them again. And who knows what happens to them? It makes me so upset when people do that. So that's, that's the reason for that. I don't know what that car was trying to warn me about. Maybe there was wildlife on the road. That would make sense. I warn people about wildlife. Obviously, I was just talking about that moose. Yeah, I'll warn people if there's wildlife on the road or in the ditches up ahead. But if I go, if I see a cop car hiding hiding on the side of the road, pointing his radar gun at oncoming traffic, my advice to you is just do the speed limit. Because you might be innocent, but the guy behind you might be a criminal. I'm not gonna let them know. The camera does not do justice to that sunset. Well, first of all, the windshield's in the way. And I don't have it mounted outside, <coughs> pardon me, outside the truck, but man, you just have to trust me. That is, I'm driving straight towards it. Beautiful. We just crossed into central time zone, so I gained an hour. Yep. It was 9.45 and now it is 8.45. Just like that, I got an hour of my life back. There are many time zones across Canada. For those of you overseas, 
you have Newfoundland time, which has its own time zone. That's half an hour ahead of New uh, Halifax, which is Atlantic time. <laughs> For some reason, Newfoundland is special. It gets a half hour difference. Then there's Atlantic time. And then there's Eastern time zone, which is when the United States joins us. Eastern time zone. Then there's Central time zone, Mountain time zone, and Pacific time zone. And that's all the time zones of Canada. There's still light in the sky. It's 10.30 at night. I love it. Lots of bugs out though. Lots of bugs. We'll clean them off in the morning. Coming up the Petra Pass right here on the left. I'm going to turn in here and go in the driveway back there. So I'm just going to park. I'll grab fuel in the morning. There's always parking here. You know, there's usually parking here. We'll do a circle of the lot and see if we can find the best one. Got lots of spots in the back row here. I'm gonna go check the front row. Oh yeah. There we go. I can go around the back and drive through. Why back in if I can drive through, right? There we go. Front and center, how about that? Got a nice neighbor right here. Got no neighbor beside me yet, but that guy over there is a pretty good guy by the looks of it. I'm sure this spot will fill up very quickly here. I'll be shutting my truck down right away. And we'll enjoy a nice quiet night. So we're gonna go to bed right here. I'm planning to wake up right here in the exact same spot. I pulled the truck brakes and the trailer brakes. The truck just got safety. All the brakes are just perfect. I'm not expecting to roll away or wake up in a different spot. It's never happened to me yet, though that would be confusing. Sometimes I wake up in the truck and I look around confused like, what town am I in? Where am I? But I'm expecting to wake up right here. From here, we're gonna go to Kenora, pick up a load there tarp it again, like a nice little Christmas present, and bring it on down to Minnesota, the Brainerd area there. Drop it, and from there, I gotta book it down to Minneapolis. I've got a load waiting for me in Minneapolis that's taking me back home. It's gonna be a, a rush, rush couple of days. Tomorrow's not gonna be too rushed, because this weekend that I'm filming this, the U.S. has a, a holiday, Memorial Day weekend, I think. Hope you guys are enjoying your Memorial Day weekend. Uh, in Canada, we don't we have Remembrance Day, and that's in November. Don't you guys have Veterans Day? So you have Memorial Day and Veterans Day. I just realized that. You have two two holidays like, that are kind of the same thing, right? Veterans Day, Memorial Day. Good for you. That's cool. We have Remembrance Day on the same day as your Veterans Day. So we don't have a holiday this weekend. Our next holiday is Canada Day on July 1st. There are no long weekends in June, unfortunately. But there is a lot of sunlight because the longest day of the year happens in June longest daylight hours so uh, it's my favorite time of the year not necessarily my favorite month but my favorite time of year uh, I like springtime it's so much newness and so much to look forward to yet before winter thanks for watching today everybody I appreciate you hanging out with me uh, don't forget to hit that like button and that subscribe button before you leave and I'll see you in my next video tomorrow take care